Really good to see you guys. What is up, Kanapa Hall? Good to see you guys. Some of you that are joining us in Orlando and other cities and online, Auditorium A, really great to have you guys. If you're new around here, my name is Mike Patz, and if you're new around here, you're like, who is this guy, you know? So uh, it's really good to see you. I've been on sabbatical. A lot of you guys know uh, it's been a lot of time with working on my dad kind of stuff the last few months, and a couple of weeks ago, we buried him. We did not expect it would happen, but in God's timing, the sabbatical coincided with his passing, and a lot of you prayed for us on that, and I'm very, very deeply grateful. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that time. It is a wild kind of week that we've had, though, and so because of that, I wanted to kind of tag team a little question and answer time right now with Pastor Ryan, who you guys have heard preach uh, several times while I've been gone, and he's just done a great job. But uh, in light of everything that's been going on this week, Pastor Ryan, uh, greetings to you, and you've got a unique perspective being from New Orleans and things that you've seen. How have you felt? Give everyone a greeting, but how have you felt uh, leading into this? I'll get into God's Word here in a minute, but uh, w- what have been your feelings this week in light of what you've seen? Yeah, well, uh, good morning to everybody who's here and those that are watching uh, in whatever venue that you're in uh, as well. Uh, and like Mike I m- mentioned, Pastor Mike, uh, that uh, my perspective has been a unique one. I've been really, um, just really broken this week. And, and forgive me too, I told him last service too, I even just jotted this stuff down for some of the, the questions I knew he might ask just because my emotions have still been just really raw and just kind of all mm-hmm. over the place. Um, but I have, this past week, I have uh, prayed, I've cried. Um, I've sang to the Lord, uh, you know, over everything from Orlando to Dallas to um, Philando and Alton. Um, and yeah, I've just been in a, in a really kind of raw spot. And being in New Orleans, too, that brings a unique perspective as well. For those who don't know, my context that I kind of look at things from is obviously I'm a, a black male. Uh, don't want that to slip by anybody um, this morning. So. <laughs> Um, So that's one. Uh, But in addition to that, you know, being from New Orleans, I come from a family that, uh, you know, has some uh, affluence in terms of my parents, but also uh, my grandparents, who I spent every evening with, are um, straight up um, just kind of in the hood, to be honest with you. Um, Just to help out. uh could you define in the hood for some of the <laughs> listeners right so, now? Yeah. That they could. Um, a lot of just, uh, you know, gang activity, drugs, violence. Um, and these are the ones who would pick me up, you know, every evening for, from school. And this is where I would spend my evening every evening and then kind of go home to this other world. Um, so mm. m- my perspective is one that's really unique being able to see um, and live almost in these two totally different worlds and, mm. and how that impacts you. Um, and even our church, you know, it's, it's been an interesting spot to be in because I found over this past week being a black pastor at a truly multicultural and multi-ethnic church, um, you know, even when everything happened, I had tons of people who were looking for hope and encouragement Mm -hmm. and peace and wanted to know how I walked through um, that aspect. And then I had a whole nother side that was reaching out for um, understanding and just the safe place to Mm -hmm. even be able to process some things uh, in ways that they felt like they couldn't do with other people. Uh, You know, so having to kind of operate in, in both worlds and at the same time trying to process even through my own uh, emotions fully with where I was What happened some of the emotions? I mean, like what's uh, last, last service you were mentioning, you know, there's just that very real feeling of fear, you know, like that, that could be me. You know, like that could, uh, now I don't so much feel yeah. that from my perspective, but one of the realities, if like you were saying, Hey Mike, as a black man, I think to myself, man, that, that could have been me tomorrow. That could be me. That mm-hmm. could be my cousin. That could be uh, my, that could be my godson. That could be a ch- if I have a child one day, Speak to the fear for a minute. I mean, just there's a lot of fear right now that's going on. How would you speak into that emotion or anyone here, anyone that's watching that just feels that fear? Maybe they're at Kanapa Hall right now. And what, what would you say to that person? Yeah. And, you know, so I, I was telling Pastor Mike, you know, one of the things that's unique, too, is is part of this is almost like having two totally different conversations, because understanding that one for people who believe what we believe as Christ followers and Christians, that perspective alone is yeah. totally different than the conversation with somebody who doesn't believe what we believe and their hope isn't in Christ and are still searching for answers to this whole thing. And, and for, the, for the people who are in that boat, I don't even know other than you, 
Jesus. <laughs> I don't know how you do this without um, Let's take a commercial Jesus. break real yeah. quick. The Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. <laughs> if by chance you do not know Jesus and you do know fear very much, when you come to know Jesus, fear just starts to yes. dissipate. So uh, if you've never turned fully to Jesus, this is your day. Okay, yeah. back to the <laughs> Um, I have been on yeah. man. I just want to, <laughs> uh, you know, want to talk Jesus. You know, man. and uh, it, it is hard to fully articulate and help people to understand that when these incidents happen, that uh, especially as one from the black community, it's not just an individual right. isolated right. incident, um, but you really do. When I look into the eyes of, um, of Alton on Facebook, when I look into the eyes of, of Philando, like I do feel like I'm looking into the eyes of myself, that I'm looking into a mirror because it's very real mm. that that could easily have been me, mm. um, that that could be me today, that could be me tomorrow. Because even though for people who know you may feel like, oh, well, Ryan, how can you say that? You know, you're, you're very well spoken, you're well uh, educated, you, pre you present yourself in a certain way, like I just don't see, but understand People out there don't know that. They, they don't know what my background is. They don't know what my education is. So the first appearance that somebody has, the first perception is it's a, it's a black male. Um, and, and believe me, I understand that on both sides, there's, yeah. there's fear that's there. One thing I don't think people understand too is that for officers and those in the black community, there's a lot of similarities that, that we have, both of which don't want to be uh, held in a certain light, both of which you don't want snap judgments to be made against them, both of which you just, just kind of on edge and mm. senses are, are ultra heightened mm. right now. So yeah. um, believe me, if you're, if you're out there and even if you're an officer, I totally, um, you know, some of the, I even I was <laughs> crying this week too over, over one of my good friends who's an officer here in town and happens to be African-American male. And so even for African-American police officers, uh, had that same fear because for them, when they're going into the in, into some of the communities too, um, they have a very real awareness yeah. that people look at the uniform yeah. and not um, the color of their skin. And so even for some of them are very much on edge because they don't know if people are looking at them and angry well, at Well, there's them a or, lot of anger. There is. There is a, a ton of anger. I mean, speak to the anger for a minute. Like, what would you say to someone here that, that just, I mean, even when you're reading people posting things on social media, the rage is all over the place. I mean, the anger yeah. is just about out of control in some places. How, what would you say to the angry? You know, one, I think for those of us, especially in this room, and if you're watching, um, this really is an opportunity for the church mm -hmm. to be the church. Yeah. Um, there's a church that the world does not believe exists. And right now we have an opportunity to yeah. reflect um, the heart and the nature of, of Jesus. Um, you know, to the anger specifically, I think at some level, and this is what, you know, I always want to be mindful to say, and some people in, in my own community get angry at me for, uh, for mentioning this, but if, if you love Jesus, at some point, we have got to, for the sake of the cross, when we have brothers and sisters who are seeking to understand and to ask questions, give people a safe place to be able to do that without fear um, that they're going to say the wrong thing or they're going to be looked at in, in the wrong way. So I've had, you know, I mentioned land services. I've sat across from um, some of my white friends who've, who've told me, you know, Ryan, I, I don't understand. And, and, you know, I don't know if I ever will, but because I love you and because you're my friend, I really want to get this. And, and so in those moments, it's an opportunity because yeah. either I can give a harsh word and, and lash out or, or scold somebody yeah. for not fully understanding, or I can take that opportunity and say, you know what, for the sake of the cross, there are some offenses that I have that I desperately want to cling to and maybe even have somewhat of a right to. But if I love Jesus and I believe in everything that he did for me on the cross, then how can I not? in those moments say, okay, Lord, in light of what you've done for me, you died for the ones who yeah. mocked you, who beat you, who whipped you. You came to save and redeem the very ones who would do these things to you. So in light of that, knowing that part of my sin sent yeah. you to the cross, how can I not then yeah. lay some of my offenses down? Yeah, let me, let me just piggyback on that, though. If, if you're here and you're not a minority, uh, I, I really, I want you hearing a voice, which is we really have to get to the point where someone that's been hurt or oppressed needs to have to always take the high ground. 
You know, if you don't know what the word gentrification means, you could go Google search it. Okay. You don't need to continue. The other day I was listening on a conversation and you know, one of the people there just had no idea what Jim Crow was. So when new Jim Crow got brought up, they're like, what was the old Jim Crow? And, and the, you know, so the, the black brother that was there was just like, Oh my goodness. You know, how do we even have a conversation if you don't even know what Jim, you could, you, you know, Google is your best friend. You actually could do some research <laughs> right now if you're wanting to maybe get to just take a look, so, but really reach. Uh, the, I think the idea would be here would be if the body of Jesus, is going to be the body of Jesus. We're going to have to, beloved, these, I, com- I give you these commands so that you will love one another. Mm-hmm. That's what Jesus says. So it's time. This is our yeah. chance to love each other. Ryan, what else? We just, you're about to go out to Lincoln, but just yep. closing thoughts, and, and then I want you to pray for us. Yeah, just the, the church, you know, this is a sensitive moment. Our nation is hurting. We have to realize the opportunity that, that we've got to mm-hmm. be able to build bridges. One yeah. of the things that broke my heart the most, too, is the fact that knowing I'm somebody who I've committed my life to being able to build bridges in reconciliation um, between people. And so when things like this happen, yeah. um, it's just such fertile soil for criticism and condemnation and divisiveness, and and I'm urging you, um, do not let that seep in. At some level, you've got to realize if you trust and believe in the cross and believe in the message of Christ, Mm. that these things are not just skin issues, but they are sin issues. Uh, And if we believe in the message of Jesus, that uh, the color above any other that matters more than black, more than white, more than brown, more than yellow is red. Mm. And it's for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And it's through that we are all bound together. So please let that be um, the priority as as, you you move forward. And and you're going to say a lot of just phenomenal things, even in the words that are We'll, follow, pray, so. we'll pray over us, wherever you're at. Kanapaha, you guys join us, all to May, every, anywhere you are. Brian, pray over us right now. So, Lord, we, we do thank you for this morning. I thank you for a faith family mm-hmm. um, like this one that I have found a home in and that you've blessed me with, one that I truly do believe has a heart to um, not only serve you, but reflect you in your character. Yeah. So I pray that you would guide us in these moments. I pray mm-hmm. that you would truly give us the courage to be the church that the world needs to see and yet does not believe exists exists. Um, So guide our hands, guide our thoughts, guide our words, Mm -hmm. um, Lord, and we just thank you in advance for everything that we're trusting and believing that you're going to do in us, with us, and through us. And Lord, we just speak blessing as well to um, to everything from Orlando to the families who've been impacted by Mm -hmm. Dallas Mm -hmm. and uh, Philando and Alton and Mm -hmm. all the others that have Mm -hmm. went unspoken. Mm -hmm. Um, Lord God, we know there are many. We pray for your presence and your peace in your name. Amen. Amen. Can we give God thanks for Pastor Ryan? Thanks, Pastor Ryan.